consciousness revolution of the 1960s, with and without <coughs> particular medicinal aids. <laughs> the ethic of individualism, new spiritual agendas. And they talk about these generational cycles, and in those cases, and if you look at generational cycles, they say about every 70, 90 years, the length of a very old human being, a national crisis occurs in American society. In the 1770s and 1780s, the American Revolution. 70 to 80 years later, the American Civil War. You know, 80, 70 years later, the Great American Depression. In the 2000s, the Great Recession. And those are the kinds of you know, massive crises that we face. Roughly halfway to the next crisis, a cultural awakening occurs, revitalization movement, and people come up with, you know, responding to the crisis. It says that generations that come of age as young adults during a crisis or an awakening directly absorb the lessons of that defining era and carry these lessons forward in their attitudes and behaviors <coughs> later in life. And these become the kind of dominant generations. So according to this, baby boomers are going to be different on average than the silent generation. They're going to be different than the Gen Xs. They're going to be different than Gen Ys because we were formed in different times with different crises and different <coughs> awakenings. Gen generations that grow up as children, not as young adults, during a crisis awakening take a dependent role during the defining era which shapes their later attitudes and behavior very differently, these are recessive generations. So what, are each, what is each archetype or generation share? An age location in history, particular era, some basic attitudes toward family, toward risk, toward culture values, how much civic engagement, as well as share a collective personas and follow similar life trajectories. Again, I'm not saying I believe this. I'm saying this is what these two well-respected journalists, uh, uh, academics believe. They actually take it back to the 15th century. Their Arthurian generation, humanist generation, the Reformation generation, reprisal generation, the Elizabethan, the parliamentary, you get the picture. Right through to the lost generation, the GI generation, the silent generation, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. Finally, they suggest that we have generational archetypes. They call it the idealist or the prophet. Born after a crisis, during a time of rejuvenated community life around a new social order. Right? Possibly after World War II, during the great economic boom of the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. They grow up as the increasingly indulged <laughs> children of this post-crisis era, come of age as self-absorbed young crusaders of an awakening, a focus on morals, values-oriented elder leadership, and these two guys point out, these were Sam Adams, Ben Franklin, Abraham Lincoln, Herbert Hoover, Franklin Roosevelt, as well as you. You have the reactive, or prophet, born during not a crisis but an awakening, a spiritual awakening, a time of social ideals and spiritual agendas. Henry David Thoreau, all that. Young adults passionately attack the established institutional order, <coughs> civil disobedience. They grow up as underprotected children and come of age as alienated, post-awakened adults. Oh, we're so alienated. <laughs> Pragmatic midlife leaders during a crisis grow into resilient post-crisis elders. Liberty, survival, honor, George Washington, John Adams, Ulysses Grant, Harry Truman, and Dwight Eisenhower. And today, not you, but the Gen Xers. We also have the civic generation, the heroes, born after an awakening, during a time of individual pragmatism, self-reliance, and laissez-faire. And in the era of Ronald Reagan, George Bush, perhaps, grow up as increasingly protected post-awakening children come of age as teen-oriented young <coughs> optimists during the crisis emerge as energetic, overly confident midlifers and politically powerful elders who go on to work on Wall Street. <laughs> Community, affluence, and technology. Cotton Mather, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, JFK, and dear old Ronald Reagan. And maybe the millennials.
millennials born between 1980 and 2000. And then finally, the adaptive generation, the artiste, born during the crisis, a time when great dangers cut down social and political complexity in favor of public consensus, aggressive institutions, and an ethic of personal sacrifice, the New Deal of the Great Depression. <coughs> Grow up overprotected by adults preoccupied with the crisis come of age as the socialized and conformist young adults of a post-crisis world, process-oriented midlifers, and thoughtful post-awakening elders, the 1950s. Expertise in due process, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, and the silent generation that preceded the baby boomers and came of age in the 1950s known as the silent. So, where is America's current position according to Howe? It says, as boomers, those of us, replace the silent generation as elder leaders, they will reject caution and compromise and act on moral absolutes. Enter the Tea Party. As Gen Xers replace boomers in midlife, generation after us, they will apply a new pragmatic survivalism to management decisions. Balance the budget. Cut government spending. Don't raise taxes. And as millennials, the youngest of us, replace Gen Xers in young adulthood, they will revitalize community, social discipline, and public purpose. Stay tuned, live a little bit longer, and the good days are back. <laughs> so this is one way of looking at it. What I'd like to suggest is let's take about a five or 10 minute break, think on all this. We come back, I have one more set of slides I want to show you, and then I want to show you the survey results we did of you, okay? When we come back, we're gonna take a look at changes in the family. Good, thank you.